And good evening, everybody. We're breaking in news programming tonight for our special election coverage. Yes, Democrat Joe Hogshead is now the projected projected to win a third term as mayor of Indianapolis. He is just taking the stage live in Indianapolis at Country Kitchen to address his voters. Let's tune in. Just a few minutes ago, I got off the phone with my opponent. I thanked him for a hard-fought campaign over these past many months. As we together highlighted the challenges and the opportunities facing our city. He has been long valued member of the Indianapolis community giving his time, his resources, and public service to our city. And I welcome Jefferson's continued contributions toward bringing us closer to a better Indianapolis. Before I begin, I want to extend some thank yous to the people in this room. Thank you to my campaign staff, Emily, Blake, Hannah, Connor, Cheryl, Isaac, and Tyler. Where'd she go? Thank you to Mrs. Cordelia, our campaign chair. Thank you to Myla Eldridge for your leadership at County Party. And thank you to Mike Schmoll for your leadership at the state level as our chair. Thank you to President Bob Osley, whose leadership has secured the next class of city county councilors. I'm excited to work hand in hand with this new council over the next four years, continuing to move our city forward. Thank you to the countless volunteers who knocked on doors, made calls, and even drove voters to the polls over these recent weeks. Our victories and these council victories would not have been possible without your boots on the ground. <laughs> to borrow a well-worn phrase. Do me a dollar. Okay. <laughs> Lastly, I want to thank the people of the city of Indianapolis. <laughs> Over the past eight years, we have rejoiced together and we have stood in solace together. In good times and in tough times, it has been the residents of our beautiful city who have kept us focused and energized. And that does not stop today. We will need you over the next four years because change can't come from the mayor's office alone. It takes advocates, it takes neighborhood leaders, it takes community stakeholders to shape city government into a government that serves all of Indianapolis, all people, all zip codes, all four corners. And luckily, we have a head start. I'm proud of what we've been able to accomplish over the past eight years. We've passed seven balanced bipartisan budgets. We put a billion dollars toward new infrastructure. We've invested in our police officers and in the root causes of violence. 
to secure back-to-back -back years of the largest reduction in murders in IMPD history. We led the nation in the emergence from the pandemic, hosting all of March Madness, bringing hundreds of thousands of fans back to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and hosting the Collegiate National Football Championship. We also have the NBA All-Star Game coming up here pretty soon. And don't forget Taylor Swift! Don't be asking me for tickets now. We have changed how people thought about criminal justice. We have gotten rid of private prisons, and we've invested unprecedented dollars in mental health response. We have begun a wholesale transformation of our parks and our trail systems, making it possible for every resident to enjoy high-quality, open, public, welcoming spaces. We have set the stage for the continued resurgence of our downtown. All right, we have just heard from incumbent mayor Joe Hogsett. He is our city's mayor now and he will be elected. This is a, a third term th for a third term in four decades. He is the first mayor to be elected with that. And um, we have not had a Republican mayor since 2015. So as you just heard him addressing the, the voters there live in Indianapolis, they are celebrating tonight. Yeah, this is a victory lap for Joe Hogsett, uh, mentioning many of his accomplishments in his first two terms, and this was not close tonight. Uh, Joe Hogsett winning a third term, 60% to 40% over Jefferson Shreve tonight, Felicia. Absolutely. So Jefferson Shreve actually conceded just before 9 o'clock tonight. And our team coverage continues tonight with Emily Longnecker, who is at Republican headquarters. Emily? Wisconsin, Felicia, yeah, obviously this wasn't the conclusion to the night that Jefferson Shreve had hoped for. He told his supporters here when he addressed them that when he decided to run for mayor, it was really a heart decision, not a head decision, to do that because he knew how difficult it would be to face incumbent mayor Joe Hogsett. He said that when he called Mayor Hogsett to concede that he offered and the mayor asked him to stay vigorously involved as a private citizen to help make the city better. He said he was gratified to hear the mayor tell him that he, Shreve, had made the mayor better and been the toughest competitor that he had had in all 34 years of running. Um, he says that he has had bigger challenges, though, than running for mayor, namely when he started his storage business all those years ago. But he said taking that chance allowed him to have the money and the time to be able to invest all of these nine months um, in running for mayor. He said that he has grown tremendously uh, during this process, that it was the most expensive education uh, that he had ever had, but it, uh, it, it helped him be even more committed and discover things about the city that he loved even more. I asked him what he planned to do tomorrow on day one post-election of no longer being candidate Shreve, but private citizen Shreve, and he said he plans to just breathe. Scott, Felicia. Okay, that is Emily Longnecker mm. reporting live tonight from Republican headquarters. Emily, thank you. We will check back in. As we can still see, there is a crowd still mm -hmm. gathered there at Republican headquarters. People just kind of reacting to the news tonight. Yeah, Jefferson Shreve, even in defeat, wanted uh, people to enjoy the evening, and so many of those people still there at Republican headquarters. Let's get some perspective for you tonight on this election night. Uh, we're not only going to talk about the Indianapolis mayor's race, but the other major races across central Indiana. We're going to give you the numbers in a sec, uh, but we do want to uh, welcome in Dr. Melissa Borja, who's an American cults professor at the University of Michigan, but she calls Indianapolis home. She's been analyzing the big races here in central Indiana. It's great to have you here, Dr. Borja. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. Let's start with the Indianapolis mayor race tonight. 
Hogsett winning a third term by 20%. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm not surprised. I think we should be honest that um, he had a lot of advantages. He didn't take the race for granted. He had a, a credible opponent in the primary. He had a credible opponent in the general. Uh, mayors who are incumbents tend to struggle more in off-cycle elections. But his major advantages are, number one, he's an incumbent. Um, incumbents have a 35 percentage point greater likelihood that they'll win. And second, he's a Democrat. He's a Democrat in a city where people vote for Democrats. We can't forget that Joe Biden beat Donald Trump in Marion County by 30 percentage points in 2020. Um, Scott and I have been talking about this all week. I think that's why it's so interesting mm. this mayor's race is because you had points there were times where you felt like it could swing either way. A lot of voters seem to be more moderate in this area, but tonight, as you mentioned, it spoke. they spoke loudly and they spoke blue. They did, and it, I think it's worth pointing out that it's very rare for voters to switch parties. Um, an analysis of uh, voter behavior in 2020 versus 2022, only 6% of voters switched um, the party of the candidates they voted for. So I think partisanship is real. I think it's part of the story here. It's part of the story nationally. Let's talk about the uh, the money that was spent in this race, some of the political ads that our viewers have seen for many, many months now. Jefferson Shreve poured a lot of his own money into this race, did he? Yes, a lot of money, $13.5 million, which accounted for approximately 93% of the I think that set a record. Yes, yes, this is the most expensive uh, mayor race and I think in Indianapolis history. But Joe Hawksett was around six million, so less than half of what Shreve spent. I think the takeaway here is money can matter, but it clearly didn't matter in this case. Uh, money can buy ads, but ads don't win elections. People win elections. Um, party affiliation also continues to matter, as I mentioned earlier, and might not, um, might probably matter more than how much you spend on ads. Some of the uh, ads that we did see on television that Joe Hogsett put out there was trying to t uh, tie Jefferson Shreve to former President Donald Trump, specifically with gun rights and that kind of thing. What, what impact, if at all, did that have in the outcome of tonight's race? Well, I, I think we should think about municipal elections as being a convergence of both very national issues and very local ones. And so nationally, we know that um, Republicans generally do well on crime. That is an issue that works well for them. Um, but locally, it clearly wasn't enough. Um, I also think it's worth pointing out that um, sort of at the, at the local level, again, uh, people remember that the Republican Party is affiliated with a whole range of characters, some of them moderate, like Jefferson Shreve, and some not so moderate. And I'm actually gl glad that you brought up crime because that was something that was very interesting with these two candidates. They didn't have extremely different crime plans. What do you think about Jefferson Shreve's strategy as he approached one of these huge issues for Marion County voters? Well, I think one thing to keep in mind is how voters might think about crime. Yes, Republicans do very well when people are concerned about crime. But here in Indianapolis, we know that crime is very much a gun violence issue. We have horrific levels of gun violence here. And so if voters think about the problem of crime as a matter of gun violence and they diagnose the solution as being about gun reform, then I don't think Republicans necessarily run away with the issue. So there's no advantage that Republicans have or Democrats have really on, on gun reform. So much of our discussion has been here in Marion County. Let's show you what happened in Hamilton County tonight, specifically in the Carmel mayor's race. Uh, Sue Finkham, who is a Republican, wins there in Carmel. And, you know, this continues the Republican uh, longevity there because Jim Brainerd had been mayor there for more than 30 years. Any uh, response on, on that race? So I was really interested in seeing what would happen in Carmel and in general in Hamilton County because I think it is a place where we can see potential um, warning signs about what might happen in 2024. Uh, so. I am surprised that the margin is as big. We, mm -hmm. we do know that Carmel and Hamilton County more generally ha has been more competitive space for Democrats. Um, Democrats won uh, the presidential race, Joe Biden won very barely in 2020. Um, Destiny Wells won in Carmel last year. So, um, so we have seen Democrats make gains, but it clearly wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. okay. And we have to remember Republicans 
are very strong historically and in the current moment in mm -hmm. Carmel. Yeah. This is Dr. Melissa Borja from University of Michigan, a professor there. She's analyzing for us tonight. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue to comb through some numbers and work through some of the results that we're just getting in. Yeah, all of our poll results are on our website, WTHR.com, and our news app. Felicia and I will be back with you tonight at 11 o'clock, and we'll break down the entire election night across central Indiana. But for now, let's get you back to regular programming.